Hey everybody, this is Doug Mark, president at Learning Zen. Thanks for joining us again for five franchising questions. I'm here with Andre K. He's my esteemed guest. He's the CEO and founder of Socially Buzz. And Socially Buzz, if you don't know this already, they're a social media company. They do advertising. They do uh, reputation management. Andre's got his, his hands in kind of all things social, and we're really excited to have you on the show today. Thanks so much for joining us, Andre. Doug, thank you, and I truly, truly appreciate you for having me. Um, I know it's been a while, and congrats on what you're doing. Thank you. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> well, well, thank you. And I, I, I've, I've told the story to some of my colleagues before, but I, I met Andre probably, now it feels like it's been 10 years ago and, and it, it very well may have been. That could be when we first met each other. But it was funny because we were both early on. I was, I was saying that I had a, I had a card table out and, and I might have had a banner behind me maybe back in the day. And I, I met Andre, who was wearing a backpack with a sign coming out of the back of it and that said socially buzz. And I, I knew early on this was somebody I, I, I really wanted to get to know because he was kind of willing to do anything it took to be successful. And, and that meant for him, that first show was pounding the pavement, walking up and down the aisles, introducing themselves to every brand that was at that show and talking about the importance of, of social media. So Wow, you, you've come a long way, man. Can you, can you tell our guests a little bit about Socially Buzz and, and how you guys support franchising? Sure, sure, sure. So um, I, I'm going to, um, before I jump in, I want to piggyback off of something you said a little bit earlier. Uh, so with Socially Buzz, so getting into franchising, uh, for me, even, even at the shows, one step before that was me actually learning about franchising as an industry and yeah. going to a show and I walk pretty much every single booth, speak with everyone in that show. And the last person I met was one of the franchisee, franchisor that we're still working with up to this day, eight years ago. Wow. Uh, so then because of that, I actually jumped into saying, okay, I'm going to start examining at the show myself. And that's how I actually ended up there. So, so I, and I've come from a background of, of marketing, right? So from the nightlife, before Socially Buzz, I own an out, outdoor marketing company. So I was, I, I've known to be gritty up on the streets, midnight, passing out flyers, stuff on my back. So I know how to grind, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, fast forward to Socially Buzz, uh, we pretty much exist to help businesses grow using social media, data, and advertising, right? Uh, myself, I said, we've owned Socially Buzz, been around for about 10 years now. Um, and and we have worked with clients like Domino's Pizza, Jamba Juice, TGI Fridays, um, Golden Cross and a bunch of other franchises. So uh, from the franchisor side and the franchisee side as well. So we, we I, I'll say we know a little bit about <laughs> the yeah. franchise industry in itself, but literally that's what, uh, that, that's who we are. And I mean, companies come to us um, for four main things. One, they want overall social media management um, or they want, which means covering their advertising strategies, their, their social media organic strategy, influencer strategies, or they come to us and say, hey, we want to grow our franchise um, franchisees. Um, so we run those advertising campaigns as well for them just to generate qualified leads. Um, or they come to us because they want um, consulting. Um, we help them with consultation as well. Just say, okay, we are, they already have the team, but they need someone to come in and develop the strategies for them, right? Um, or they just want us to manage their, their, their just the basics of their social media, put together um, social media um, initiatives for them. So that's why companies come to us um, to help them. Well, and, and that's a really interesting story because I, I, especially when you're still working with your first client, which I absolutely love, love hearing that. I mean, I think about some of our clients and my favorites are the ones that I've worked with over years and years and years. And I've seen them start relatively small and, and get larger and larger and larger. And you can't help but feel like you were a part of that. So what, it, what a neat story that is. Um, this wasn't even on my, my list of questions as we're kind of chatting along here, but I, I came across something and, and, and it was probably from watching your YouTube channel now that I think about it, but um, do you guys actually have um, a platform as well now? Like, I swear I can run my advertising campaign on my phone from, from Socially Buzz. Is that right? So early on, we did. And, and that's not a life lesson, right? Okay, good. Uh, early on, Oh, what's this? Four or five years ago, we invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in developing our own app, right? This was before 
this was right along with um, the Who Suite of the World and stuff like that. But ours was focused on reputation where you could, there wasn't anything in existence that could manage your Yelp and Google Places and TripAdvisor reviews right. all in one place. But we invested a lot of money in developing it, but something came very clear early on. Um, one, Facebook is always innovating, right? So yeah. if you don't have the money, you can't keep up with Facebook innovation, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. um, and, 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 and two, I've learned that franchisees do not want to do it. You can give them the most expensive tool in the world, the best tool in the world. If you have 100 franchisees, they're going to be probably 2% of those franchisees, actually, or even less, actually actually use the platform that you're going to invest in them. So once I learned that, uh, tough decision, but I had to kill the app and went back to our, to our core, which is the, the managed social media, right? So we understand okay. franchisees, one, they don't have the time, right? Because you're focusing on building out their business. So I said, okay, do what you do best. And we'll do the rest, right? You focus on the, the people. You focus on um, growing the business. You fo- we'll, we'll focus on the social media. We'll focus on the marketing. So that's why I made that decision. And that decision has paid, it's paid for itself over a thousand times over and over again for us. When we started out, like we didn't realize the importance of the internet marketing, the digital advertising, the managing of our social channels. And and now that we have a much better understanding of this, we understand how critical of, of a piece that was in the puzzle. It, it's not the puzzle, but it's a critical piece in that puzzle and understanding how that works um, really, I think, has, has strengthened us as a brand ourselves now that we realize, oh my gosh, we got to have engaging posts where we can interact with our community, but we've also have to provide value. Now, I know that you have the ability to you know, manage people's social campaigns. Does that mean that you're actually, you know, writing the, the copy or creating the ads or doing the social posts, or are you working in conjunction with a brand and they have a design team that does that? It's, it's, it's a little bit of both, right? And, and even, even to go back um, to the social media, a lot of people, a lot of businesses didn't find the value in social media because one, they couldn't justify the cost or they couldn't see t- a tangible return. Like, okay, I pay for X, I'm going to get X, right? Uh, it was a little bit harder for people to justify that. So they didn't take it as serious. Um, even now, even, even prior to COVID in January, February of this year, a lot of business still didn't take it serious, but and, it's, and 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 now I think a lot of businesses look at social media different now um, than it was yeah. even before, right before COVID. That February, January, March, their their look on it, their outlook on it right now is completely different. I could guarantee you that. Um, so yeah, so businesses come to us and like I said, we one they say Andre, you guys can do everything. We're gonna focus on what we do best for the franchise. So our team would develop the content, develop the messaging. We're the one that's posting on the Facebook, their Instagram, their LinkedIn, their Google. We're developing the content. We're creating the photo shoots. Um, we're creating the 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 the, the content the animations. Um, we're we're responding to the reviews. So our team is like full on doing everything, right? So we're doing everything for them. Then you have the the, the team that might the, the franchise or the other company that might already have a, a design team or they might already have someone in the house. So we'll support them. So we'll say, okay, what are the strategies for the next three months or for the next quarter, or for the next um, year, year, right? So we'll develop those plans and then their team will create the graphics or, or the creators to go along with that. And then we'll distribute it, right? So we'll work along with your team. Um, like I said, we work with clients that didn't have any marketing director once we started with them. Two years in, they, they have an entire team and we still support their team that way as well, right? So so we know how to work with, one, their internal team. In addition to not having a team, we know how to make that switch based on where they are. That That's really interesting. And as you're responding there, one of the things that you said really kind of caught my ear and, and made me think about something, which is you had mentioned, you know, COVID because obviously we can't get away from it. It's in our face, you know, 24 hours a day. Um, are, are you under the impression that since COVID hit, has it been, you know, more important to be investing in your social media or do you think it was a little bit less important? You could dial it back. What was your kind of opinion at that time? 
Um, I'm, I'm, there's a two prong question or two prong answer to this, right? Uh, one, with marketing in general, and I mentioned this in my book that you that you bought. Once again, I appreciate you for buying my my recent book, um, Surviving COVID nineteen: Market Relief Book for Small Businesses. So I mentioned in that book where I said you shouldn't stop, right? People, people, most time businesses look at marketing as a an add on, right? Yeah. When I talk about it. You need to look at in your business. You need to look at marketing similar to how you look at electricity, right? Oh, I need electricity to run my business. I need X to run my business. I need marketing to run my business, right? So the worst thing you could do as a company is stop your marketing when you need marketing the most. Yeah. That 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 mindset just never never resonated with me. Like it doesn't make sense, right? Why would you stop the one thing that was designed to create new business for you? Right? So I always believe in always to be consistent um, with your marketing. Um, even for myself, like even us, we're a social media company and it's really about how you adjust. And I, and I share this story with you. Um, when COVID hit, we lost probably 60%, a little bit 70% of our business. Wow. Right. Because once again, we catered to a lot of the franchises, the restaurant industry. But one thing I always knew was as soon as we got through it or made our way some way through it and people kind of become normalized where we are people yeah. the number one thing people are going to need is social media because they're going to need to get back to marketing yeah so for us even though we were doing our marketing and still running advertising one thing i decided to do was how can i provide value to my community right i'm not sure if you saw this but one of the things i did was we were looking for funding we were looking for grants we were looking for all these things as well right um, even though our income was still coming in, we were still, revenues were still coming in. We also needed a way to make sure that we could keep our employees and all that cool stuff as well, right? So once we started looking for all these things, we was like, wow, hold on. My, my business that I've supported, past clients, they're going to need help as well. So I created an entire blog on my website dedicated to all the resources we found on, on, on grants, on loans, on how to do it. And then I started emailing it out to everyone. I didn't ask for anything. I didn't want anything. I was just saying, if I'm if I need it, I know that there's a, everyone else needed because this was the one time in life that we were all the same in a sense, right? Yeah, we were all going through the same exact thing. So I think, and then once I knew that, I've gotten so many emails back from business owners, phone call, text, Andre, thank you for this. I got the loan. I could actually pay my employees. I could pay my rent. So that, that made me feel good, right? Even, yeah. even in my mind, when I, when, when I look at a grant and it might say, okay, only 100 people, and I have thousands of people on my list, I could have easily said, you know what? I'm not going to send this one. Let me just do it myself. <laughs> I still sent it, right? I don't care. If I, I'd never gotten anything at all, just hearing the stories of people getting it was enough for me. So once I did that, and once we got through COVID, all the businesses start coming back to me. Okay. Everyone started calling me, Andre, let's do some business. Let's get stuff done. We could do some stuff now. So we've been really fortunate to be really, be I mean, if we're pretty much in a better place than we were before, right? That's awesome. Um, right now, because we believed and we gave value um, when people really needed it. Yeah, I, I, I can speak from experience that I, I bought your book because I knew it mattered and I knew that you're an expert in what you do. Um, but I also leverage your resources. We actually had this exact discussion at Learnings and we said, should we build a resource page that's like the Socially Buzz page? And we decided no, because we were just going to reinvent the wheel. Why don't we just turn people on to the Socially Buzz page, which has those resources here? But it, it was so important for our client base because they're located all over the world and your links weren't just for one region. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the things that you put out there would, would help businesses in any location. And, and, and that's awesome. And, and obviously that's the kind of partners that we're always looking for to, to kind of work for in this industry and the, the kind of people that don't think necessarily, how do I help myself? You know, first it was more like, how do I help the community get through this together? Because we're all being faced with this challenge that nobody really knows. There's not one right way to do things. So we're going to learn and, and we're going to listen and we're going to share our stories and find out what's working. And I think that's why franchising as a whole, I, I think, did pretty well. The, there was a, a lot of industries that were heavily affected, but they also got to hear stories of people in the industry and how they were getting through this time. You know, whether it was 
a gym concept that decided to do everything, you know, virtual, um, or if you were, you know, a, a full service restaurant and now you're going to open up to, you know, curbside and, and delivery and things like that. But I think it was important to, to share those stories and hear from other leaders about what you were doing. And, and then it always brings me back to, well, if I'm learning all of these things and, and I have questions about, you know, this business or that business, the general public must also have those questions. And so I think social media was a way for us to level the playing field. We have this, this platform that we can use and we can get information out that is important. Hey world, we're, we're, we're still in business. We're still open. Our hours changed. We're doing extra cleaning. Uh, we've got curbside. We've got takeaway. We're using Grubhub now or, or whatever it was. But I think it, it became really important that we leverage those social channels so that the community knew where we stood and how we were going to support them. And I, like I said, I, I learned a lot from, from your book, but also that, that key list of resources that you guys shared was critical. So thank you very much. I mean, you, you, you don't go dark, man. You have to, you have to communicate, I mean, with your, with your audience. You just have to make sure you make an adjustment and understanding um, what, what their needs are, right? So just like you're, as a business owner, your, your focus shifted, right? Your customer it, focus shifted as well. So you, have to, you have to really... Um, play up to that, to those things as well. So now you're saying, okay, COVID, we're kind of getting back now. What do I need to do to let my customers know or potential customers know that it's safe to dine with me or it's safe to shop with me? Exactly. You create videos of how you disinfect your your, your location, create videos or content of how you um, uh, process and make the food with, 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 with the customer safety in mind, right? Um, yeah. Involve the customers in what you're doing and you only could do that very quickly, very easily by social media. That's or or yep. if you have content developed, uh, I mean data developed, whether it's your customers' email, just your phone numbers, then you could also distribute content there as well. But social media was the easiest, fastest, cheapest way or free way to actually do it. Yeah, yeah, no, and I, I think it was so important to get that that messaging out at that time too. Um, I, I I think you're. I mean, a lot of companies, the first move is to, unfortunately, it, it's to cut marketing and it's to cut training. And it's like, those are the two things that always scare me the most. I, I think when you go through a time like this, you, you've got to keep the marketing and training out there because the marketing is going to tell the world that you guys are still in business. And the training shows that you're investing in your people who are scared at this time and kind of don't know what the future is. And they're going to be facing the general public. So the time that we put into them is going to be rewarded with what we get out in the end. Well, it, it, it also speaks to something that I, I you know, I, I did a little bit of research and um, you were in 2018, you were a speaker at Minorities and Franchising. And, and the one thing you said, I want everybody to take this one thing away, even if you don't take anything away anything else other than this, which was highly profitable franchises invest in their people. And it, you said, you have to understand this is the most important thing. These, these profitable franchises are investing in your people. Can you just tell me a little bit more about, you know, why that was so important that everybody take that part of the message away from your, your presentation? It, it speaks to me as a leader and as a marketer. I think that's what makes me really, really good at what I do is, behind every customer, behind every partner, behind every um, relationship, there's a person. There's a person behind that, right? So I think people first, right? And when you think people first, then you have more compassionate, right? You, you, you're, 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 you're able to now connect and develop your messaging, develop your, your strategies based on that person, based, based, instead of basing on, oh, a customer, right? You're basing on who is this, who is, who is this person, right? Their husband, their wife, their mom, their daughter. I mean, their their whatever that thing is. And I think that's what's important for once you understand who you're speaking with, and then you're not just speaking to a thing. You're actually speaking to a human, to a person. Then you understand that this person also have feelings. They also love. They also they like things. They dislike things. And that makes it easier for you to really create your messaging and create your branding and your content to speak to that person at art because it's different than just saying, hey, I'm just going to throw this marketing thing up. I'm going to shout at everybody. No, it's like, okay, I'm speaking to this specific person because I, I, when it comes to marketing, I, I train this is why one thing I do is 
marketing at the core is simple. Yes, there's a lot of technical <laughs> technicalities with it, but sure. to the core, it's simple. On one side, you have on one side of the spectrum, you have the business, you have the service, you have the product, whatever this thing that you that you're building, right? So for us, we say, okay, your business, I'm pretty sure there's probably a hundred other businesses, doesn't matter what business you create right now, there's probably a hundred other business that's very similar to your business in some way, right? Yeah. So what's that one thing that, that, that you can say, this is the value, this is what I'm providing, right? So once you have that, so that's on one side, you have your, your business, so you find what the value is. On the other side of the spectrum is the people, right? Not because, uh, not because I'm a woman, uh, doesn't mean I like every high heels that you sell, right? Or every stilettos, right? No. So as a, you, you, you sell stilettos. So you're saying, okay, who is my audience, right? Who is this person that I need to connect with, right? Not because I sell this doesn't mean that every woman, everyone that's a woman is actually going to buy from me. No. Okay. I'm trying to find women that love high-end lugs, high-end stilettos um, that don't mind paying $600 for it. For, 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 for a pair of heels, that's the connection you want to connect to, right? You're not going to connect with someone that may be younger and don't have that disposable income or that income to buy a $700 heels or $1,000 heels, right? So you have to make sure you're connecting with the right. And the only way you can do that is if you understand the people. So every so one side is your business, the value what you provide, and the other side is the people. Everything in between it is marketing. Right. So based on understanding who that person is, you're going to use the right social media channel. So you're saying, OK, I need to target people between women or people between the ages of 13 to, to 25. OK, they need to be on TikTok. Right. Oh, I need to target um, men that are actually 45 to 60. They need to spend more time on Facebook. You see how you see how it connects? Yeah. Understand Once you understand what your what your value is, understand who you need to target then the marketing makes sense. And, and, and so are, are you building, you know, like sort of profiles for these different audiences that you're talking about? So like you said, if we're selling a, a high-end stiletto and I know that my, you know, audience is, you know, 18 to 30 year olds, do you kind of have profiles and you say, okay, this campaign matches with this profile, this campaign matches with that one. Is that how you're kind of setting things up? Exactly, right? So the great thing with even Facebook, Google, Instagram, LinkedIn, any of these platforms is I could say, okay, not only do I want to target women between the ages of 18 to 35, but I could say, hold on, the, this woman that like high luxury thing, what does she read? Where does she eat? What does she yeah. drink? What does she buy? So I'm going to say, okay, let's target people that like luxury cars, luxury vacation, um, live in these specific zip codes. You see how we, now you can really find the people you need to target based on building out that profile because you understand not just who they are, but what they like. Well, like I said, what they, what, what their interests are, their demographics. That's how I'm, like I said, I think because of understanding people makes me really great at what I do because I go to that core to make sure that we're targeting the right people for, for our clients. That's awesome. Um, you, you, you mentioned TikTok, so I'm going to ask because I'm a little bit more on the senior side of things. I'm a relatively new uh, inductee into TikTok and sort of understanding. I do have a 10 year old who's you know, constantly asking me, can we get TikTok? And I'm like, no. Uh, but anyways, it, I, I think it's become a tool now that is going to have to go into our toolbox when we talk about uh, social and social selling and things like that. Are you starting to see TikTok as a viable advertising source? Yes. Uh, like I said, it's also based on the core you want to target, who you're targeting. But I've, I've always looked at this when it comes to businesses, not because a social media channel exists, doesn't mean you need to be on it, right? right. Uh, you need to understand where, you, where your value lies as far as where you can connect with your most customers, right? Like TikTok might be amazing buzzword right now, but that doesn't mean your business needs to be on it. Yes, you can start learning what it is. You could, you could create a profile for yourself, scroll around, look around, see what other businesses are doing, but not because it exists doesn't mean you need to be on it, right? Yeah. Uh, and like I said, TikTok Smart. is great. And I think a lot of the things that a lot of, one of the big things that why a lot of businesses didn't get on it as yet is because before you had to know how to create content on the spot. Now you're able to now create content 
and then upload it separately, right? Um, so I, I think that's one of the big things that's, 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 that's changed and that where, where more businesses are able to now use it. But I still think it's early on for them. Um, I still think people, businesses, um, is still ad adapting to get on it. Um, yeah. Just like with anything else, it's a learning curve. Um, but like I said, if, if, if Instagram, could, I'm, there's a big thing. If, if they're on TikTok, there's a huge chance that they're also on Instagram or they're on Snapchat or they're on someone, somewhere else. So yeah. it's, okay, where do I want to invest my money and my time? Especially as a business, if you're doing it yourself, you want to be, you don't want to spread yourself too thin, right? You don't want to be like, because that's then that's where you're going to be like, I, I hate this thing. Social media doesn't work. It's right. too much work. Because then you're, you're, you're spreading yourself too thin on all these social media channels. Pick two, pick three, and double down on those. And and, and you'll see the difference in, in, in results. Yeah, I, I think so many people take a look at social advertising and, and social media platforms. And they say, I want to create a viral video. And that's extremely hard to do. It, we used to say that it was nearly impossible. And then I, I, I think that that ended up sort of getting that theory debunked because there was a group that did that, that chat roulette song. And I can't remember what the heck it was. Um, mm -hmm. But they, they did it for a homework assignment for their like senior thesis. And they did get it to purposely go viral. But in general, if you're trying to create a viral video, it's nearly impossible. It's like you need to create first a great video, a great concept, and it will go viral if it's good enough. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it, it, there, there, there are things that you could do, but there's no prediction of saying, oh my God, we're going to add X and Y and we're going viral. If that's the case, every business and every brand would have went viral, right? Yeah. So there's, there's no secret sauce in it. I mean, there might be a few things you could do uh, but there's no one size fit all for every business or every brand, right? So just create yeah. really good content that, that, that matters to you, that speaks to you and your customer. Um, create things that, might, that, that you know is, is, is relevant and put it out. Yep. Yeah. If you're, if you're going to create an account on TikTok today and you're hoping to create a viral video this week that's going to get a million hits, you're going to be disappointed. Exactly. Um, it so be it, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Exactly. Oh. It, might be, it might be the stupidest thing, but like, ah, I don't <laughs> like it. And, that, and that's another thing what, uh, when it comes to developing content, I always tell my clients, it's not what you like, right. it's what I like, it's what works, right? Yeah. So you might say, oh my God, I hate this thing, and upload it, and everyone is on it. Yeah. Right? Um, so so it, it, it's, it's like I'm saying, there's, there's, there's no true formula, because something you might hate, everyone else in the world loves it. Someone you might say, oh my God, this is the best thing I ever created. I spent 24 <laughs> hours doing it. Um, I think it's gonna, and no one even look at it, right? <laughs> seven, seven, you get seven views at the end of the day and then you're frustrated and it's like, yeah, you, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so this has been really helpful. I've been, I've been obviously getting a lot of really great takeaways from this. Can you, can you think a little bit about some sort of tangible takeaways that a, a brand could be doing right now to let's say, you know, what is something that a, a franchising brand could be doing to let's say increase their following on a, a social channel? Um, staying consistent. Um, that's one thing. Um, and, and, and then creating partnerships and relationships, whether, whether it's with other brands or whether it's with influencers, right? Those are, those are great things to, to build um uh, growth is, is a build way a great way to build brand awareness and a lot of these things um and you've probably seen as well a lot of these things i mentioned in the book as well um is i, I gave a lot of those tips broken down broken down and what are the things you could do to actually build that that, that, that additional awareness especially during covid now so um one build great relationship um and stay consistent right develop the content and stay consistent I'm taking some notes as we go as well. <laughs> um, so we, we've, we've clearly danced around the, the COVID issues uh, several times and it, it's something we all live with on a daily basis and we're always thinking about it. Are, are there people doing things right now that they absolutely should not be doing? Like, it, it, like if you could say, guys, that's crazy. Stop doing that. Are, are people out there spinning their reels, wasting their time doing something that you wish they weren't? No, I... I, I... If they're not doing anything, I'll be worse. I'll, I'll be I'll, I'll be more upset, right? Nothing is worse than something. Okay. Exactly. exactly. Do something, right? Yep. Yes. 
create videos, just do something you've never done before. Uh, ex experience with other things, and just you can't you can't just not do anything. I'll be more upset if you just stand there just wishing for someone to come knock at your door, wishing for someone to order from your your place, wishing for someone to 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 give you hand you their money. No, go out there, do things, um, do videos, do content, do animation, do podcasts, do, do write books, <laughs> do something. Um, right now, just keep doing. So during the segment. I like to pull up an image from something in your history and have you put it into context for us. So what I'm going to do on my end is I'm going to do a quick share of my screen. <laughs> All right. So I've seen a lot of pictures of Andre K driving around with trunks full of turkeys. And I want to know why. Um, awesome. I, I, I love this photo. Um, so one of the things I've done as part of being the CEO and leader of Socially Buzz is a few years ago, I joined the, the Pledge 1% um, movement where, where I donate 1% of our time, our talents, and our, 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 our treasures to different community organizations. And one of the community organizations that we work with locally here in, in Miami is called Bridge to Hope. So every year we commit to giving away turkeys to family in need. So this was one of the, one of the years, I, I don't remember what year was this, um, I've, I've done every year. Yeah. Well, as you remember, is we were actually picking, pack, packing up a bunch of turkeys to drop off um, for Bridge to Hope. Keep doing that, please. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you, thank you. Yes, it, 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 it's always my highlight on my year when it's, it's that time of the year when we got to give away whether it's the turkeys, whether it's back to school items, um, whether it's Christmas gifts to kids in need or families in need. It's, 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 it's a pleasure of mine. Like, nothing brings really more joy than being able to do that. Oh, that's great. Yeah, see, so that wasn't too scary, was it? No, nah, it was awesome. No. Well, trust me, we, we, we looked. I, I wish there were scarier things. You've got a fairly clean, you know, internet history out there. Not all of our, some of our guests have crazy things we get to talk about, but you're, you, you, you've done a pretty good job with your own social reputation, <laughs> which is great. Um, all right. So this has been really helpful. I know I've learned a, a ton about how Socially Buzz supports franchising, but also just in general, what you guys offer and what you guys do. Um, I know that I've been going to, to conferences for years and, and, and so have you. We bump into each other at shows. It's always awesome when I see you. If, if I'm a, let's say I'm a brand and I'm, I'm relatively new, let's call me an emerging franchise or okay. um, maybe I've got, you know, five units what um, is there a trade show that you think that like an industry trade show that you go to that you think would be really beneficial for me as an emerging franchise or? Yeah. So one of the, one of the shows that I'm always at <laughs> um, is, is the, the franchise um, Expo South franchise um, um, international franchise um, uh, Expo as well. Um, by MFV. MFV put on some really great shows as well. So I'm always, I always support them. I always see what they have as well. So if, if, if you're a new franchise brand trying to get in, uh, I'll definitely say start going to those shows. Even now, even though we can't go to the actual, uh, actual exhibit itself in the sense of a location. Yeah. Um, and, and the great thing with MFV as well is that they have them everywhere. So you, if, if you're, whether you're in um, West, East, South, you, you always have the opportunity to, to be able to there. So one thing they've done now is actually move it online. So we're able to now, okay, now that, and that's another thing of adjusting, right? As yeah. a business, instead of um, just taking it and dying, you're actually ad uh, really adjusting yourself and, 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 and adapting to change. Uh, so now they have this online portal, the online um, expos, which are just as well, work just as well. Yeah, that, that's awesome. And there, there's just so many different shows you yeah. know, that are, that are out there, right? At the end of the day. And if you're new, you, you don't know, you know, which ones are, are, are the right fit for you. So I'm always, I'm always picking people's brains for this exact same thing, because, you know, is IFA the right show for you or is Springboard or is it Franchise Expo South or something else? There's so many different ones. I think it's really important to kind of get an understanding about what ones are going to help me the most. And I think it also speaks on you and it goes back to really understanding your brand and your business. If you're saying I need more international um, exposure, then the IFP from MFB, the Internet Franchise Expo that happens in New York every, was it June or May, depending yep. on the date, that might be a great one for you. Or you're saying I need to expand 
in um, Miami or South Florida or in the South, then the Franchise Expo South might be the one for you. Or I want to expand over the West, then the Franchise Expo, um, the, the West, I mean, so you, you decide on where you are as a company and the brand and then apply that on um, whatever Expo or show you want to you want to go to. Yeah. And, and, and there are all of these specific shows are out there and yeah. they're all to kind of support you no matter where you are in, in franchising. If you're an established brand or you're just getting started, there's, you know, conferences that would be right for you. And obviously uh, IFA is going to be a, a good resource because they're going to list a lot of the conferences out there, but there are a lot of, you know, things outside of there. If you're an emerging brand, then, you know, you should be going to the springboard show, or if you're a multi-unit owner, you should be going to the multi-unit franchise conference. Exactly. If, you know, developing and building new leaders is important franchise leadership and development down in Atlanta. So there's, there's so many things to support exactly. you. So like um, I said, it's really based on where you are and where you, and then you could pay there's, there's, there's no, there's no, there's no, I mean, limit. There's so much different value out there that there's something for everyone based on yeah. where you yeah. and, and everybody's pivoting. So everybody is putting on virtual shows right now. We're, we're going to get shows in person again. Um, I, I, I know it's important because this franchising community in particular is a very, very social bunch of people. So getting to these events and, and being able to shake hands and enjoy a, you know, a, a glass of wine or together or, or, you know, over some food is really important. And we're going to get back to that. And I think uh, it's just a matter of time now. So keep the faith. Yep. Well, Everybody, I, I, I want to thank my guest again, Andre K. Andre, thank you so much for, for being here. Um, people who want to get in touch with you, people who need help with their social marketing, um, with their social media, their reputation, advertising, all those things. How can they get a hold of you, Andre? Awesome. Simple. Just go to the website, sociallybuzz.com, uh, which is S-O-C-I-A-L-L-Y-B-U-Z-Z.com. Just jump on there. Um, once you complete the form, you, you're able to, to really pick um, a specific calendar date to speak with me directly um, as well. So we get to, we get to talk and get that, that give, give, give you a free consultation. Um, on your business. So let's go to the website, sociallybuzz.com and you see everything there. You can even, if you're interested in learning more about the book as well, um, which is called Surviving COVID-19, Marketing Relief Book for Small Businesses. You can get it whether it's digital or paperback. If you go on the website as well and, and, and pick up a copy. And I, I can vouch for this guy. I've known Andre for a while and he's the hardest working man in the business. So keep it up. Thanks, Andre. We appreciate it. Everybody, thank you so much for, for following our channel. Be sure to, to, to follow us on, on LinkedIn and on, on YouTube, as well as our Twitter feed and everything else. We'll, we'll link to it on the video and, and have a great afternoon. Thanks again for joining us for five franchising questions. Appreciate it, Andre. Thank you. Thank you.